Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our service. Um, as most of you know, uh, Woody has um, had surgery uh, last week. Their intention was just to spend a night in the hospital and um, then be able to go home and start rehab. But uh, some things changed. But uh, we've been praying. You probably got a few updates on your prayer chain um, I want to tell you uh, how much I do miss CV in the office I appreciate her work I've always appreciated her work she does a fabulous job uh, and I miss her when she's not here uh, but Woody uh, Miss CV sent me a text today and this comes from Woody he wanted me um, uh, to say this to you guys uh, he said to tell you that he is feeling much better and if his arms was big enough, he would squeeze the whole Empire Church. That he appreciates all the prayers and gives God all the praise for his progress. And he loves his church family. We love Woody, and uh, we appreciate Woody, and we're thankful that God, uh, that he's turning the quarter, that God is, is helping him uh, to get better. With everyone, we've talked to several people this week, I said earlier, and we've been praying for, for all of those who's recovering uh, from sickness. We thank God for his protection on them as well and all of our church family. We serve a God that heals, don't we? Amen. He still delivers. He's still set free, and we're so thankful that we can trust him. And uh, speaking of trust, uh, we'll be talking, uh, continuing in our series, Equipped for Battle. Um, we talked about Saul's armor last week and uh, that we needed to take off the armors, the armor of others and the expectation because God had made us to be, to be uniquely used by him. And this morning we're going to start off with talking about the belt of truth. Now, I don't know, you probably have had several different studies about the armor of God. But I believe that the belt of truth is the foundation uh, for uh, us as Christians because it's the truth that brings us to Christ. It's the truth in realizing in ourselves that we are in need of a Savior that brings us to the cross and asks God forgiveness of our sin and allow Him to enter our life and for us to start our journey with Him. With him. In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them by your truth, and your word is truth. We know that everything that we look at in life, there's a truth, and then there is a deception. Or there is a truth, and there is an invitation. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says, All scriptures is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and to equip His people to do every good work. There's some key words in there that we, we notice uh, to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. I don't know about you, just because you're a good person is not enough to get you into heaven. Just because you think you do good things and just because you might uh, take someone out to eat or open a car door or a door for someone, uh, uh, it doesn't matter your works. It's got to be your faith in Jesus Christ and asking Him and be covered by the blood of Jesus. And when He enters your heart, He begins to work within us and He begins to let us rip. Excuse me. Realize what is wrong and right in our lives, and He continues to correct us when we are wrong, and teaches us to do what is right. The belt, uh, as a soldier, the belt is is the foundation of the whole armor. This is where uh, the, the 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 loins are girded around, and there's protection around. Uh, the soldier and also is very important because this is where they keep the, the offensive weapon 
that we use, which is uh, the sword. And so when we look at this and we see that the belt of truth uh, is so important, it is the foundation, and without that foundation, uh, we would be going into war or into battle without our sword. Um, we have to look within ourselves about the reality of truth. We, we understand that truth sometimes uh, is uh, viewed differently in society. Uh, we, we see this question that was, very, it was asked back in uh, John chapter 18 when Pilate asked, What is truth? This is when he was talking with Jesus and uh, he had the decision on letting him go or uh, letting uh, Barabbas uh, go, uh, the, the decision that they made. And he asked him, what is truth? And before that, Jesus began to tell him who he was and the purpose of him being there. And when we look at life and we understand within ourselves that truth is something, uh, that it is the foundation of our lives, and it's what we believe that directs our path in life. We understand uh, there's been people who have been led astray, and they thought that they truly was given the truth. We, we look at James uh, Jones. Uh, I don't know how many remember about him. Uh, I believe that's his name, where he uh, got a bunch of followers together, and he started uh, uh, preaching, and he started a congregation, and he began to preach, or Jim Jones is his name, and began to preach. And uh, all of a sudden, he started preaching, and the crowds began to come together. And before you know it, he was turning around preaching that he was Christ. And the people really believed him and followed him. And we all know the tragic, tragic events that followed in that scenario, in that time. But when we look at truth, we must understand. I, I was uh, heard on the radio it was a while back about a man who was talking about there's 7 uh, billion people in the world. And uh, there can be 7 billion different truths. Well, I beg to differ about that. There's only one truth, and that truth is the Word of God and Jesus Christ. But everyone tries to think that their truth is relevant, their truth is what uh, stands apart, and that they believe what they believe. But when we really break down, there's four things that we talk about with truth. Uh, first of all, we got to realize that there is such thing as truth. Some things are subjective. For instance, if you look at my hand and you see a ring on my finger, you might say that that is an expensive ring. But I'll say to you that it's not an expensive ring. It's a matter of subject. If you look at a car and you look at it, whether no matter what model it is, and you say, man, you must have, a, have to have a lot of money to get that car. Well, someone with a lot more money might look and see that that is a cheap car. It's how you view it. Some people think that uh, a car, uh, by, by, by how it is or by their financial status, determines a truth in them. But the reality is, if I say, if I look at a car and say that that's a Chevy, and it's a Chevy, and someone comes and said, no, it's a Ford, the truth is, it's a Chevy, right? We have to be understand that no matter what people's opinion of what something is, we have to find the true value. Uh, just because someone calls a Chevy a Toyota doesn't make it a Toyota. Amen? Just because someone calls something as they see it doesn't make it so. And this is the reality that we face not only uh, in the world today, but in our church world today. It's the, how people view things and how people see things differently and how our truth might be different from someone else's truth. But in reality, all of our truth should be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. When we look at the Word of God, there is one truth, and that's Him. When we look and we fashion our lives after the truth, then our life becomes in harmony with the Word of God. See, a lot of people uh, go in the Bible and they want the truth to line up with their beliefs and how they believe. But the reality is, is our beliefs should line up with the truth, which is the Word of God. And we have a lot of things that are mixed up in our lives today simply because we believe it to be true when in actuality it's not. Take, for instance, how many of us with our spouses try to recollect something or 
think that we know something, we say, I know it's true. I know. I've experienced it. And you fuss and fight because some of them say, no, it's not that way. And you say, yes, it's that way. And then you, you kind of fight a little bit. And then finally somebody will Google it to try to find the answer. And then we'll go and then you pull out your phone and you Google it. And you want to find the answer to prove them wrong. And they want to find the answer to prove you wrong. Most of the time, both of us are wrong. But that's how we are. We're so, we, we're so caught up on our f- feelings and what we feel is right. And we, doesn't, we don't compare it to the Word of God. The Word of God is not subjective. Amen, Brother Doug. It's not subjective. When we look and we take value and we look at truth and we understand that truth cuts us to the core. There's a reason you ask Christ into your life. It's because you found the truth in your life that you couldn't live without Him. You held your life up. and You took inventory of your life and you realized you needed a Savior. The truth is the route that you were going was going to lead you to hell. The truth is that you heard about a man called Jesus and that He is a good and loving God who if we ask and repent of our sins that He will enter into our lives and He will change our lives altogether. That we will become new creatures. See, we were faced with the truth, the truth of the gospel that let us understand that our faith in Him, that we believe on Him, that the truth will set us Truth. Truth is not determined by what we feel or what we believe, no matter how sincere that belief. I can remember when my kids were young and they would be playing, they would go, Look, Daddy, I'm a dog, and they would bark. Some of them times they would growl. They would walk around on all fours. Now, I knew they wasn't a dog. But they said, I am a dog. And they began to act like a dog. But Just because you act like something don't mean that you are. Just because they say within themselves, you, uh, 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 you act like it, you feel like it, doesn't mean that you are. We live in a society today where their feelings and and what they think and who they think they are doesn't line up with the Word of God. And it doesn't make the Word of God wrong, it makes them wrong. And when we come to that reality in our lives and understand that the truth of God and the Word of God should be our God in our lives, we will come to the understanding that in within human nature, our sinful human nature, we always want to war against things in our lives. We always want to have fun and feel like we're having a good time and sometimes we don't want to make the sacrifices that we know God is calling us to make in our lives because we understand the truth of the situation is that we're not ready to be where God wants us to be. The reality is we try to hide truth in our beliefs so that it will eliminate stress from our life. I don't know about you, but if I know something to be true and I'm going against what the truth is, I wrestle with it quite often. I think about it quite often until I can get it right. That's what consumes me in my life. So what the, what, what the people try to do is try to turn it off and try to make compromise with it and try to change their belief system to accommodate and relieve the stress that's in their life. That's why you have people who are struggling with salvation, who know has a God God calling in their life, who will go and turn more towards the things of the world. It's because they don't want to line up with the truth. They understand the truth. They know the call that's in their life, but yet they run from it because they know of what it entails for them to change their life. The truth hurts, but the truth will place us always on firm, solid ground. 
It's funny, in the late 1700s, most Europeans were certain that tomatoes were poisonous. Did you know that? They thought it was poison, and no one would try to eat a tomato. And it's funny to think about it today, how much tomatoes are consumed, but a few people had died, and all of a sudden they were scared, and what they didn't realize was was, uh, that a lot of people were eating off lead plates, and that lead is what would cause the sun to get sick and die, but they blamed it on the tomato. And they wasn't really willing to try to see if it works. If you think something is poisonous, I don't think most of us would want to try it, would we? But for many, many, many years, they believed that it was poisonous. But just because they believed it was poisonous didn't make it so. The reality is there's a lot of people in and most people, and truth is not within itself determined by a popular vote. Just because the majority thinks it's right doesn't make it right. We talk about some laws that are being passed in our country. We talk about uh, marijuana where they're legalizing. Just because the majority thinks it's all right doesn't make it so. Amen, Brother Doug. Just because people have beliefs and majority believes uh, in certain things does not make it a truth. We must understand that in all things that we do, we must within ourselves seek out the truth in our own life we must put on the belt of truth we must be willing to be uh, uh, to be buckled in with all of the things in our life and be willing to change our life to the reflection and the reaction of what truth brings into our life in Ephesians 6 10 through 14 it says in a final word be strong in the Lord in the power in his mighty power Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities, the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be Uh, You will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. See, we place the armor on us to be able to withstand all the strategies of the devil. And we know that the devil, he is a deceiver. He is someone who will deceive you. He is someone who will try to trick you. And if you don't have the belt of truth on, the belt of truth will keep you on the straight and narrow. But if you don't possess and wear the belt of truth, you are subjecting yourself to the fall of the enemy through the strategies of the enemy or the devil. There's three things and there's strategies, and I'm just going to list three. He he likes to tempt, tempt us. He has lies and deceptions and contention. He nags us to act on addictive urges and to entertain selflessness and greed. The second, the lies and the deception. He is the great deceiver and he attempts to counterfeit every true principle the Lord presents. And contention. He delights in seeing good people argue. Amen, Brother Doug. When there is contention in your home, in your workplace, we must recognize those things of the devil. We must stop what we're doing. And we must seek peace. And we must pray. And then he gets us by a fourth one, which is discouragement. He likes to discourage us, don't he? This is one I believe that most Christians face. He uses this too quite effectively. Because discouragement is fed by disappointment. Disappointment is a feeling of sadness when our hopes and dreams are delayed or changed or crushed in life. In this last hour, there is a lot of disappointment. 
There is a lot of disappointments that we see in our lives. But one who will not disappoint is our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The hardest thing to deal with in life, in the world today, is truth. John 8, 32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I want to tell you today that as long as we stay in the Word of God, as long as we continue to be humble and long as we put on the belt of truth and understand that God our creator his high, his ways are higher his his knowledge is vast and he knows the best for us and when we put on the belt of truth and when we uh, uh, rightly divide God's word and read and seek after him when the enemy comes we'll be well able to defeat him because we know the truth that he has given us dominion over the enemy he has given us victory over him and to know the truth is that Jesus died on a cross and gave us the ultimate victory that no matter what we face on this earth no matter what we go through in this life the one truth is is that if he is our uh, savior and if he is our lord that when we take our last breath on this earth uh, we will be with him again and I believe with all of my life uh, all of my soul and all of my spirit that if we put that truth on and we activate that truth and we live in the truth that God our creator uh, our lord and precious savior Jesus Christ we can overcome anything if we know the truth that, that he paid the price for all our sins. See, we a lot of times we we have something what we call worship time in churches today. And I've often wondered how people, when you see, and you can see it in some people's faces when they begin to worship the Lord and they begin to cry out to God, that God uh, begins to move in their behalf and begins to change them. But there's some people and there's some things and sometimes in worship services where people will worship and they'll walk out the door the same way they came in. They'll come in and they'll look for some way and they believe that uh, they believe within themselves they had a good church service and that everything was going good. But the reality and the truth is, is that they were just going through the motions of worship. They were going through the mo motions of church. And they get out in this world when they come in to the, to the church on empty and they leave on empty. It makes the week harder. It makes life harder. But when we come with the truth that if we are to get close to Him, in John 4, 24 it says, For God is a spirit, and so those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You have to have the belt of truth on. Amen. You have to understand that when you begin to worship Him, amen, that's when God begins to deal with us. That's when God begins to move in our life. And those things that are not right, with him he begins to deal in truth with us to allow us uh, amen a time of reflection and a time to get those things that are wrong in our life to make them right before him and I'm so thankful that we serve a God that when we get in his presence not only does he help us and not only does he strengthen us but he also opens up our hearts and opens up our minds uh, amen so that we can see the things that we need to change in our lives uh, so that we can draw closer to him and live a holy life towards Him. Amen. See, holiness is still important today. Holiness is still the thing in our lives that we uh, must understand that we have to have in this last day and hour. Truth. We live in a society today where truth it's just how someone believes. I can remember in the early church when preachers would begin to preach about watches and about makeup and about hairdos. You remember that? And then as the culture began to change, certain things began to change. See, they wanted to talk about certain things in the, uh, that they liked to talk about and what made them feel good and ma what made them uh, feel that they was right. And a lot of times in their self, uh, they would take the Word of God and try to stretch it to the way they believe. Come on, somebody. 
We do that a lot of times. We get the word and we try to stretch it to what we believe and try to make it so. When in reality, we just need to stick with the word of God and let God begin to deal with the hearts of the people. We must understand we must live our life in truth and live it according to His Word. And that's how we make an impact in this world is by staying and having our belt of truth uh, fasted to us and walking that truth. Uh, and we, all of the other things will begin to come together and people will start seeing that we're different. We are uh, different from everyone else who calls themselves Christians because they realize the difference that's within us. They realize... The truth, the Word of God. And I don't know about you, I'm not telling you, if you think it's a sin to wear a watch, that's between you and God. If you think your hair has to be a certain way, that's between you and God. But I'm here to tell you, we serve a God, no matter what state you're in, no matter how bad you are, that if you will come to the truth and the knowledge to know that you need Him in your life and you repent of His sins, I don't care if you have hair down to the floor, I don't care if you have every watch that's ever been made, Jesus will come into your life and He will touch you exactly where you are all the other stuff uh, amen will come into to focus when you accept Jesus as your personal savior and then you will know the real truth you will know the plan and you will know the way that he has for you just because I tell you in life when we look at this and we put on our belt of truth when people at work, begin to talk about certain things, we'll simply walk away because we realize that's not where we need to be. When we walk in truth and we understand what God's heart is and we understand His expectation for us as Christians, we won't go to some of the places that we usually go to. We won't be doing some of the things that we say, you know what, it's all right, everybody else does it, come on now. But we'll know and we'll have, uh, have it in our heart and the Holy Spirit will convict us and guide us and lead us. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and give you a list of things of do's and don'ts. But what I'm here going to tell you is put on the belt of truth and allow God to minister to you during the Word, uh, in His Word. And you will develop uh, what is right and wrong in your life. And He will make those things uh, in your life come to fruition so that you will know what you can and cannot do. See, we have people and we have whole denominations based on what you can and can't do. Jesus died for each and every one of us. And there are things that the Word of God tells us that we can and can't do. But when we begin to, to focus on God and focus on His Word, He will begin to draw us and lead us. And when we have that belt of truth, when the enemy comes and tries to persuade us and tempt us and deceive us and lie to us and try to discourage us, we can have a smile on our face and joy in our heart because we have the belt of truth to know that, amen, that tears may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. We have the truth to know that, Amen. Though they slay me, yet I will trust Him. When we have the belt of truth on, there's nothing the enemy can do to stop what God has for each and every one of us. We need to stop worrying about how everybody else is living and start worrying about how we're living. Worry about what the truth and the truth that we carry in our lives. I've seen it time and time again. It's uncomfortable sometimes when you have to say things that people don't want to hear. But it still doesn't mean that it's not true. Sometimes I have to be the bearer of bad news. And I try my best to do it in love. But most of the time what I'll do is I'll go to the Scripture. And I'll simply have Scripture there. And I'll simply read the Scripture in the midst of the circumstances. And a lot of times, it either makes them mad or it humbles the individuals. See, the truth is how powerful the Word of God is. We don't have to speak for everything. We need to let God speak for everything. And the truth is, the battle is not ours to begin with. And if we trust Him and walk in Him and walk in truth... We have nothing to fear. We have nothing 
that the enemy can do to destroy us with the belt of truth. And the greatest thing is that all of the defensive armor that we have, the belt of truth, the foundation of the belt of truth holds the sword, the Word of God. And it's powerful. And it cuts to bone and marrow. How many knows that? Have you ever got into the Word and you have been conflicted in your spirit or you've been troubled in your spirit and all of a sudden you turn to the Word and you begin to read the Word and all of a sudden the Scripture pops out and it convicts you? And then all of a sudden you had to sit there and repent before God because you've been doing it all wrong to begin with? I've been there. I've done that. I've been so adamant about my position on things in life and that I would begin to be troubled and be upset because I didn't understand how other people didn't see what I saw or what other people would do things that I thought was right or I thought was wrong and it would upset me when they would be doing things and, and I would be getting in the Word of God and I, all of a sudden I'd uh, begin to word and all, uh, uh, read His Word and all of a sudden the Scripture would pop out and I would be convicted and I would have to repent and I would have to go to them and repent because the reality is when we get the truth is that you know what we're supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and that's up to me it's a personal walk and I am not to be a judge but I am to be a proclaimer of the gospel of Jesus Christ I am to walk into truth I am to show people the way the light that leads to Jesus Christ uh, amen because he is the only way he is the only truth and he is the only light and if I have the belt of truth on and I can walk in that grace and I can walk in his calling towards my life I don't have to tell people what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong all I have to do is live my life according to the word of of God and God will do the conviction God will do the pruning God will do all the things that need to be done to bring others to the knowledge of who he is in their lives the truth is is that we think we have to do we have to do all we have to do is be willing vessels all we have to do is carry the belt of truth all we have to do is stand firm on his word and walk in faith and God will lead us to where to go. And He'll lead us to what to do. And He'll even give us the words to say that's not our own. If we walk in truth. Truth is the foundation. We have people that sit in church pews today. That believe that they're saved. They feel like if they was to die today they would go to heaven. But in reality they will split hell wide open. The Bible says that they would come to Jesus and they said, listen, we cast out devils in your name. We prophesied. And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. See, the reality of it is, is that we can believe so much the wrong thing that we can think the wrong thing is right if we're not careful. If we don't have the belt of truth on, we can think that we can go and dab in this and dab in that and do a little bit of that and do a little bit of this and we just make it all right that God loves us. He understands and He cares. I'm here to tell you God don't send nobody to hell. We send ourselves. And the reality is if we don't have the belt of truth and we're not walking in the truth and knowing at His Word, then we are to, uh, surely to fall in snares and entrapments of the enemy. And the enemy has people out there thinking that they're okay. It don't matter what they do, that they can make it to heaven as long as they know Jesus. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who claim to know Him, but who really don't know who He is. But the truth brings a mirror in our life, in the reflection of Jesus Christ compared to who we are. There's an awful truth that we are not where we need to be with Him. Amen, Brother Doug. I stand before you humbly telling you I'm not exactly where I need to be with God. I always can be closer to Him. I can always be moving closer to Him. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. You're not perfect. You make mistakes. But the belt of truth, when we walk in it, we realize those things and we allow the Word to correct us and lead us down the right path in our lives. The belt of truth is important because without truth, we're so easily deceived. Without truth and knowing where we stand with God. 
I had a conversation with a man not long ago talking about some doctrine and talking about some things, the beliefs. And I began to talk and I began to listen to him and some of the things that he was saying was, was good things. And as we were talking and beginning to discuss some things, I, I'm not the type of guy who's going to sit there and just jump on you and tell you how wrong you are. I'm, I'm the type of person who will listen to you. And during those times, I pray, Lord, just let the Holy Spirit speak through me because I don't want to say anything wrong. I don't want to do anything to make it worse. And as we began to talk, the Lord began to give me some scripture and I began to show Him some scripture in the Word. I, just would, I wouldn't just say it to Him or quote it to Him. I'd open the Bible and I began to talk with Him about it. And the Spirit began to move in that place where we were talking and we could just feel the presence and, and He was just saying, you know what, God just revealed some things to me. That's what truth does. Truth begins to reveal things in our life that are hidden, that the enemy wants hidden in our lives. But when we walk in truth, God exposes those things in our life that don't need to be there. It's not a bad thing. If I'm wrong, I want to be corrected and I want to do the right thing. And I believe you do too. And the reality is when we walk in truth, we always have Jesus to lead, guide, and direct. For He is the Word. He is the truth. He is the way. Let us stand this morning. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for your Word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for how you work in us. And Lord, how you desire to lead God and direct us. And you gave us this armor to help us in this world and on this earth. God, you didn't say just to survive, but even at the end of the attack, to stand firm, to stand in victory. Knowing, Lord, that if we follow you, and we allow you to guide us and we walk in truth, we have the belt of truth wrapped around us. God, that we can walk in your ways and we can see you move in our lives and you can direct us and draw us closer to you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's in this building, Lord, that they have the belt of truth buckled tightly today. God, that they can see, Lord, it doesn't matter the opinions of others. What matters, Lord, is in my walking in truth with you. Am I walking in truth knowing that I truly surrender all to you? And those things in my life that's not where they need to be, God, that you will give me the grace and you will give me the mercy to correct those things in my life and bring them in submittance to you. God, I pray today, Lord, as we begin, Lord, in this journey, Lord, of, of equipped for battle, Lord, that we realize, Lord, we can't take a step unless we know the truth. And that truth is you, what you've done for us, and how you will supply our needs, and how you will help us, and how you will lead us and guide us. God, we ask, Lord, today, Lord, that everyone, God, will just... Tune out the world and tune out the enemy and put on the belt of truth and walk therein and allow your anointing and allow your grace, Lord, to lead us in the path that you have chose for us. And we'll give you all the praise, God, for it's in your name. Amen.